sing, sing, sing and make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. We're grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. What's not to love about you? Heaven and earth adore you. Kings and kingdoms bow down. Son of God, you are the one. You are the one. You are the love that frees us. You are the light that leads us. And like a fire burning, the Son of God, you are the one. You are the one we're living for. Come on, we will sing. We will sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. We're grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. Let's sing what's not to love. What's not to love about you? Heaven and earth adore you. Kings and kingdoms bow down. The Son of God, you are the one. You are the one. You are the love that frees us. You are the light that leads us. And like a fire burning, the Son of God, you are the one. You are the one we're living for. Come on, we will sing. One, two, we will sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. We're grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise lift high the name we will sing 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 and make music with the heavens we will sing 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 we're grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise lift high the name of jesus You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus you didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater. So 
What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. And you have no rival, and you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Cause yours is a kingdom, and yours is a glory, and yours is a name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, and nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hey everyone, glad that you guys joined us. Happy Sunday. Let's pray before we get into the word. Father, we thank you, God, so much for this time. Lord, I ask, Lord, um, that as we get into your word, I pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds so that, Lord, it would ultimately grow 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, so really glad that you guys joined us. Um, if you recall, for GPM students, the high school students, uh, several weeks ago, I asked our teachers to ask some of you guys, what are some questions that you guys have? Some of these questions would be about your walk with God, your faith. Um, do you have any doubts? Um, what are your thoughts on? I mean, do you have any questions about like even what school teaches in conf which can sometimes conflict with what the word of God says, right? And interestingly enough, of the questions of the great, great amount of questions that we had, uh, about a third of them was really about faith. What is faith? How do you strengthen faith? How do you stay completely faithful? How do you know if your faith is secure? And something interesting that I think all of us can agree to, this one person said, I feel like my faith is failing due to virtual Zoom services and not being able to focus as much as I did in person. What should I do to strengthen my faith just like I did before? I asked our high school uh, students uh, to write these questions, not our junior high students, because I felt that our junior high students can really learn from our high school uh, brothers and sisters. So today, I want to talk about this. And before I tackle these questions uh, that you guys have given us, I want us to read this one passage so that I can make a lot of references with it. Let's read. It's in Matthew chapter 9, verse 18. We're going to read all the way to verse 22. It says this, as Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter had just died. 
he said, but you can bring her back to life again if you had just come and lay your hand on her. Let's stop there. So what's going on here? Well, Jesus is being confronted by this one person. And this one person who is a leader of a synagogue, of a church, if you would say, is saying to Jesus, Jesus, if you were only here, if you were here before, like she passed away, if you just put your hand upon her, I know that my daughter would have been healed. Well, let's read on in verse 19. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him, the leader of the synagogue. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Let's stop there. The story that I want to talk about is with this lady. This lady who had suffered for 12 years of bleeding. You know, we can toss around digits like 12 years, 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years, but I want you to really think about what 12 years means. 12 years times 365 equals an X amount of days. That equals an X amount of hours. It's a long time. And back during this time, in the Middle East society, For those of uh, them who were Jews, they knew that if a person was bleeding, if you touched blood, you were considered unclean. Think about this lady. For 12 years, she was just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Didn't know what's wrong with her. Woke up one day, started bleeding. Doesn't know how to stop it. Probably went to different doctors. Probably went to multiple different places. Was something confidential, was something very private. Maybe she was thinking, man, did God curse me? Am I judged? Whatever it was, it's horrible. This lady, hearing that Jesus is going from one location to another location, she tracks down the city where he's in, runs desperately to where she, he is. There's no social media. There's no news like it is today where you get live news. She had to run from one location to another location, looking through the crowd. And even though she was bleeding, and even though she might have been considered unclean by the Jewish laws, this lady went through the crowds. This lady also was desperately pushing people away just to touch Jesus. Now, she had this incredible faith where she thought that if she could touch the fringe of Jesus' robe, just the tip of his robe, she would be completely healed. She had this faith. Now in verse 22, it says this. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. Incredible. She believed, she had faith, and she got healed. She put it to action. And she got healed. In in the book of Hebrews, it gives us a good explanation, a definition of what faith is. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That even though you don't see it, you believe it's there. And that as you hold on to it, what you hope for, it gives strength and it brings it to reality. Faith. You believe kind of like the wind you know that the air is there you breathe it every second you breathe it in and you breathe it out you don't see it but you see the effects of it if you close your nose and if you close your mouth and you do that for five minutes ten minutes you'll pass out and you'll die you know it inside of you faith that is faith Uh, you may not see it but you see the effects of it that as it blows through the trees that you would see it move highway gpm that's what faith is we don't see it but we believe it we see the effects of it that is what faith is so i answered right there that's what your faith is now how do you uh, how do you strengthen your faith well the bible says this faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of god What you put in through your ears and what you put through your eyes as what you see and what you hear, it greatly affects your faith. When you hear more and more people who are talking about um, the 
about the great things of God, of great testimonies, of great actions that God has done, the wonderful works that He has done, the love that He has shown you, your faith will grow. As you read the Word of God, as you put it in your mind and you put it in your hearts, your faith will grow. This woman heard the testimony, heard the words that of other people who were healed because of Jesus Christ. This woman believed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. So all she had to do was put her faith into action, go out over there despite her being unclean by the Jewish laws, and in desperation reaching out to Jesus, she was healed. So how do you strengthen your faith? By what you hear, by what you see, and then putting those things into action. How do you know when your faith is secure? That's a very good question. Um, it's I believe that it's either you have it or you don't have it. You have faith in God, then your actions need to show, right? But if you don't have it, then you need to work on it. And how do you work on it? Again, reading the Word of God. Now, there's a question that I spoke about earlier that I believe is applicable to every one of us here today. Look, for the past eight months, we've been having services like this. There weren't retreats. We are now missing two retreats. Hopefully, we'll have a summer retreat. We, I think it's been eight months now. Yeah, it's November now. It's going to nine months. We closed church services in March. So it's now eight weeks going to nine weeks of us not having services. It's different, isn't it? Our walk with the Lord is very different because of this, isn't it? I agree. But you know what? This is the thing. Your services is not, church is not the only way where you grow in your relationship with God. As a matter of fact, I believe that this could be viewed as a blessing in disguise of us not having services. You might say, Pastor Sam, what are you talking about? Well, the thing is, this really puts your relationship with God as a test. I know some people, a lot of people, just go to church once a week on Sunday, and from Monday all the way to Saturday, they don't read the word. They don't seek out God. They don't pray. Is that one of you guys? It's possible. I'm not here to judge you, but it's highly possible, isn't it? What do you think this does to you? Or maybe some of you guys, you guys go to church, and when you go to church, you don't listen to the pastor, you don't listen to small groups, you don't participate. And now something that's been so habitual to you is now taken away. Now it puts these things to the test, doesn't it? So is your faith failing, falling, lacking because you don't have church services? Well, it's unfortunate, but maybe good. You know where your problem is. Now, with you knowing that problem, what will you do about it? Are you going to be like this woman who was bleeding for 12 years? Who seeks out Jesus? Runs desperately towards him? Because he is the only one who can bring life unto her? Who can save her? Highway GPM, do you really believe that our God... Like, don't you believe with me that it has to be a personal relationship with you and Jesus? That you yourself have to have to search out for Jesus yourself to build your relationship? I pray that you will be challenged. Build your faith. Grow your faith. Know what faith is. It comes from a place of desperation, really needing God. And it comes from a place where you search Him out. I pray that you would do so. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this message. We learn so much from this one person who was bleeding for 12 years and from her desperation, she seeks you out. And in the place of faith, she touches the hem of your robe, the tip of your robe, and she gets healed because she knows she believes in who you are. 
Lord, some of us in Highway GPM, because we haven't had services for so long, maybe they feel that their faith is dying or dwindling. I pray, God, that this will be a wake-up call for every single one of them. That they would seek you, Jesus, during this time. And that they would grow in faith. That they would go into your word and seek you out. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Alright guys, love you guys very much. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.